Okay, hello Cloud Gurus, I'm coming to you live from Las Vegas. It is Friday, the very last day of reInvent. It's actually in the evening. Uh, so we've been working really, really hard to get out all the reInvent news for you. This will be the longest uh, AWS of the week uh, this year, simply because of the large number of services that have been announced at reInvent. This includes things such as virtual reality, media services, application services, compute services, including the sad death of Dr. McGiffpix, databases, storage, machine learning, and IoT services. I'm Ryan Krunenberg, and you're watching AWS This Week. So the first big announcement is something that I'm really passionate about, and it's around virtual reality. And Amazon's Sumerian service is a, basically a service that allows anyone to design highly immersive and interactive 3D experiences just from your browser. So even if you don't have any experience coding virtual reality, augmented reality, or 3D applications, with Sumerian you can build multi-platform experiences that run on hardware like the Oculus Rift, the HTC Vive, and iOS devices using WebVR compatible browsers. Support for AR Core on Android devices are also coming soon. It is seriously awesome, make sure you check it out. On Tuesday, Amazon announced AWS AppSync, and this is basically a fully managed serverless GraphQL service for real-time data queries, synchronization, communications, and offline programming features. There's an awful lot to this product, so if you want to read more, check out the link below. So SQS and SNS have been used extensively for applications that were born in the cloud. However, many AWS users are already uh, making use of open source or commercially licensed messaging brokers for their mission critical apps, things like RabbitMQ, for example. So on Tuesday, Amazon launched Amazon MQ, which is a managed message broker service for the Apache, Apache Active MQ that lets you get started in a few minutes with just a few clicks of a button. And as a managed service, Amazon MQ takes care of all the administration and maintenance of an active MQ, um, but essentially this includes things like responsibility for broker provisioning, patching, failure detection, recovery for high availability, and message durability. So on to compute, and sadly there has been a death of one of my favorite mnemonics, Dr. McGiffpix, because Amazon have re released a new uh, EC2 instance type. We've got the H1, which is a new generation of EC2 storage optimized uh, instances, and it's basically uh, storage optimized for applications that require really low cost, high density throughput, and high sequential disk IO to very large data sets using magnetic storage. So if you've got any uh, ideas as to what Dr. McGiffpix with a H uh, should be as a new mnemonic for 2018, uh, please see my tweet. Again, the link is below and submit your suggestions down there. You can win one uh, year's free access to our platform if I uh, pick your mnemonic. We then have Amazon Guard Duty, and this is a new compute service which consumes multiple data streams, including several threat intelligence feeds, and it's basically staying aware of things like malicious IP addresses, devious domain names, etc. And it just adds another layer of security to your AWS account, and can also help uh, identify malicious activity going on inside your AWS account. So we have new deployment options for AWS Lambda functions, and you can now shift incoming traffic between two AWS Lambda function versions based on the different pre-assigned weights. So this basically allows you to gradually roll out your different uh, Lambda functions and only shift your production traffic to that fully once you know that it is actually working. We also have some new news around spot instances. So you can now have uh, EC2 hibernation for spot fleets. And basically this is where you can hibernate Amazon EBS back instances. So in the event of an, up or, uh, an interruption, you can basically uh, power that spot fleet back up uh, sometime in the future and all your data will be there. It'll be immediately accessible. We then have AWS Fargate, and this is a new service that lets you run containers without having to worry about the underlying infrastructure. It is seriously cool because you can launch your containers and let things like Kubernetes or other orchestration engines act as the manager and AWS will handle all of the underlying hardware requirements for you. So perhaps some of the biggest news uh, that came out of reInvent is AWS have announced the launch of Amazon Elastic Container Service for Kubernetes, or EKS. And this is a fully managed service that allows Kubernetes to be used on AWS. And Amazon EKS runs on the upstream version of the open source Kubernetes software, allowing for the use of existing plugins and toolings from Kubernetes community. And applications running on Amazon EKS are fully compatible with applications running on any standard Kubernetes environment in an on-premise data center or public clouds, which means that Kubernetes applications can be migrated to Amazon EKS with no code changes required. 
So moving on, AWS Lambda has now doubled the maximum memory capacity for Lambda functions, and this makes it easier to process workloads with higher memory or denser compute requirements, such as big data analysis, large file processing, and statistical computations. Now for the developers out there, AWS have just released Amazon Cloud9, an integrated development environment or IDE for writing and running and debugging code, all from your web browser. Now out of the box, Cloud9 has support for many popular programming languages including JavaScript, Python, PHP, etc. So you don't have to spend time installing various compilers and tool chains. Cloud9 also provides seamless experience for working with serverless applications for allowing you to quickly switch between local and remote testing or debugging. And speaking of serverless applications, Amazon have announced a preview of their serverless application repository, an AWS console component that lets producers of serverless apps publish serverless application model formatted apps and make it easy as possible for AWS customers to discover and deploy serverless apps. This will also help to strengthen the open source community around Lambda, SAM and serverless applications in general. So let's move on to databases and we've got Aurora Multi Master and this allows multiple master nodes across multiple availability zones, allowing you to read or to write multiple masters in multiple data centers. Best of all, you don't need to rewrite your application. Single region multi master modes are actually available today and multi region is coming in 2018. We also have Aurora Serverless, and this runs just like Lambda, whereby you pay for the second when, in which your database is in use, otherwise you don't pay at all apart from the underlying storage cost. We also have DynamoDB Global Tables, which is a fully managed, multi-master, multi-region database which covers outages in an entire region. It's on demand and you get continuous backups as well as point-in-time restores, and it's coming later in 2018. And finally, we have Amazon Neptune, which is a fully managed graph database that makes it easier to gain insights from relationships among your highly connected data sets. This supports Tinkerpop and RDF graph models. You get millisecond latency uh, with support for up to 15 read replicas, and you can scale query throughput to hundreds of thousands of queries per second. So let's move on to storage, and we'll start with S3 Select, which enables applications to retrieve only a subset of data from an object using a simple SQL expression. And you can use S3 Select to retrieve uh, only the data needed by your app. We then have a very similar service called Glacier Select, which allows you to perform filtering directly against a Glacier object using, using standard SQL statements. And you can use expedited services to actually retrieve the data in one to five minutes, otherwise normal Glacier retrieval times apply, about two to three hours, give or take. So on media services, this week Amazon have released a suite of five new video services that will help those in the video production business in, um, or those who produce high quality videos that span a broad range of screen sizes and formats and bit rates. And so what are these services? Well, the first one is AWS Elemental Media Convert. This is a file-based transcoding for broadcast or archi archiving with support for a long list of formats and codecs. The next one is AWS Elemental Media Live. This is basically live encoding to deliver video streams in real time to both television and multi-screen devices. We then have AWS Elemental Media Package. This is video origination and just-in-time packaging. Basically, starting from a single endpoint, it produces uh, output for multiple devices, representing a long list of current and legacy formats. We also have AWS Elemental Media Store. This is a place to store your media. Um, essentially, it's optimized storage that enables high performance uh, and low latency applications, such as live streaming, for example, uh, while taking advantage of scale and durability of Amazon S3. We then have AWS Elemental Elemental Media uh, Tailor, and this is basically a monetization service that allows you to place adverts in media. It's seriously cool, make sure you check it out. So moving on to machine learning, we'll start with SageMaker. And machine learning is still too complicated for everyday developers. But SageMaker is a fully managed end-to-end -end machine learning service that removes the heavy lifting and enables data scientists and developers and machine learning experts to quickly build, train, and host machine learning models at scale. We also have Deep Lens, and this is a great way of getting hands-on experience with AI, IoT, and serverless computing. 
DeepLens is a new video camera that runs deep learning models directly on the device out in the field. So it's actually a physical piece of kit. And we've actually got a couple of them and uh, members can go and have a look at them on uh, the A-Cloud Guru platform. And you can use it to build really cool apps like the one that allows you to open garage doors when a license plate that you recognize approaches, or you could send out notifications when the dog gets on the couch, for example. We then have recognition and it's now available for video and you can basically use recognition to analyze video and detect what objects are in it uh, and it can also do really cool things like identify that there's a man, there's a car, there's a tree and then in a given video it will deduce that the man in the video is running to get to the car. So this really means that Big Brother is here and think about all the endless apps that you could make using recognition for video. It's going to be seriously amazing stuff in 2018. We then have Kinesis Video Stream or KVS, which allows you to ingest streaming video from, from millions of different cameras and devices without having to set up your own infrastructure. We then have Amazon Transcribe, which is an automatic speech recognition service and essentially it allows you to upload your files and or convert these files into text. We at A-Cloud Guru are really, really excited about this. We're going to be testing this to generate all our closed captioning going forward. We also have Amazon Translate, which is a high quality neural machine translation service that uses advanced machine learning technologies to provide fast language translation of text-based content. And again, we'll probably use this service to translate our captions into different languages. So people in Japan or in South Korea or anywhere around the world will be able to um, you know, get our courses in their native languages in subtitles. And then finally, we have Amazon Comprehend, and this is a fully managed natural language processing service, and it comprehends and analyzes text and tells you what it finds. And it's available in 98 different languages, starting from Afrikaans going all the way to Yoruba. I think that's how you pronounce that language. Um, so it's a great service, and it will basically do a whole bunch of um, you know, sentiment analysis uh, based off the text it is analyzing. And we're almost at the end of the show, guys. I know there's an awful lot of announcements, so we're just gonna move on to IoT. We've got IoT Device Manager. As you can imagine, when you've got millions of different IoT devices out in the field, it can be really, really difficult to manage each individual uh, device individually. Um, so IoT Device Manager essentially is a management tool that allows you to manage your devices at scale. We then got IoT Device Defender. This is a security service for securing your IoT devices out in the uh, field. And again, as you can imagine, if you've got millions of devices, this can be a, a tricky thing to do. Um, it allows you to confidentially deploy IoT, IoT devices at scale. You get continuous auditing, real-time detection and alerting, and you can have fast investigations and mitigations of threats to your IoT environments. We have IoT Analytics, and this is a fully managed service allowing you to provide uh, advanced data analysis on the data collected from your IoT devices. And then finally, we've got Amazon's free RTOS. This is basically an IoT microcontroller operating system that simplifies the development and security and deployment and maintenance of your microcontroller-based uh, edge devices out in the field as well. So we've gone through an awful lot. I appreciate there's been an awful lot of announcements. You can read all the reInvent announcements by clicking on the link below. We've been so busy at A-Cloud Guru trying to cover reInvent, we haven't even had a chance to pick a winner for Guru of the week this, uh, this week. Uh, we will pick two winners next week, so don't worry if you did enter this week. We're going to select a winner when we all get back home, and we'll announce two lucky winners uh, at the end of the week next Sunday. So keep being awesome, Cloud Gurus. I really enjoyed seeing everyone at reInvent and for those of you that couldn't make it see if you can come next year we had an awful lot of fun replay was crazy it was a great party but we're all really tired and we're all looking forward to getting home to our families keep being awesome cloud gurus and i'll see you next week